Make more money, help more people, have more fun. The five daily practices to abundance. I'm on a mission to actually help over a billion people around the world to create abundance. And one thing I've learned from my experience of running the most notable sports agency in the world to all the media things that we do is that I've never met anyone who makes a lot of money, helps a lot of people and has a lot of fun that isn't happy, isn't inspiring, isn't inspiring others to be inspiring. And so over all these years, I've created practices in order to effectuate this idea of abundance, of living in a world of more than enough of everything. And in order to do that, I think it's important to understand time and what I call the mathematical equation of luck. What you pay attention to in your life and what you give intention to, what you do, say, think, feel, and believe will equal the coincidences that you want. The coinciding of everything and everyone will talk about karma, luck, and circumstance, but you actually can utilize your free will and practice your attention and intention in order to effectuate what you want if you want to be lucky, if you want to have good karma, if you want to have the coincidences or better in your life. And to understand this, I think it's important to understand time. Time is my love language. And I think understanding time can help all of us live in abundance. And the first abundant idea of time is the past. The past most people look at as limiting. It's actually infinite in its nature. If you want to close your eyes and go back 100 million years, it'll take you a few seconds, but I promise you'll get there. And if you want to go further, you'll get there as well. The past is infinite. The only limitation of the past is the meaning that you give it. The defining moments of your life, the void, shortages, obstacles, mistakes, setbacks, failures, historical relevances. I was speaking at uh, the World Summit for Sports in, in France one time, and this lady came up to me afterwards and she said, oh, but the, what about the French-American War? <laughs> like, that's going to limit you. Uh, but these limitations will determine your own self-image. These limitations, I lost over $100 million in 2008. I went bankrupt. My greatest fear, to go bankrupt. The only reason I wanted to be rich was to buy my mom a house and a car. When I went bankrupt, I had the great experience of telling my mom not only I was bankrupt after she raised six kids, worked two jobs, packed our dinner in a paper bag just so we could eat during the day, but I had to tell her that she had to move because I forgot to take my name off of her title. And so my basement in life had a basement at that time. And the meaning that I give today, that failure, mistake, setback, at the very least, has provided me a trajectory to what I want in the future or better. The future is unlimited as well. Close your eyes, go 200 million years into the future. Takes you about a few seconds. If you want to go further, go ahead and close your eyes again. It's not a problem. The future is infinite. The only limitation of the future is your self-image. Your self-image is the only limitation of your future. You will never overachieve your own self-image. And I see people all the time with all of these limiting beliefs, giving meaning to setbacks, failures, and mistakes that aren't on a trajectory of where you want to be or better. And so I've developed five daily practices to utilize each day, which is 24 hours. 24 hours is determined by a particle of light leaving the sun and hitting the earth. That's what determines 24 hours. We are almost guaranteed 24 hours. I put everything into the context of today, looking to the meaning of the past to get me to a trajectory of a future or better. And in order to do so, I want to utilize those 24 hours efficiently, effectively, with statistical success, knowing that it's almost guaranteed to me. And the day that the 24 hours isn't guaranteed for me, I've mitigated my risk in my life. Six hours if I die at dinner time, 18 hours at breakfast, it doesn't matter. I've limited my, my loss of perspective to 
whatever amount of time that one day didn't provide me, which I thought was guaranteed to me. But I've achieved so much more with gratitude and forgiveness, accountability and inspiration, able to effectuate the mathematical equation of luck, what I pay attention to, what I give intention to, what I do say, think, believe and feel today in a trajectory of where I want to be. So how do we do this with these five daily practices? Number one, know what you want. You see, most people live their lives in nothingness. They live their lives like tubes. Excuse the graphic, but it's food in, food out. That's most people on earth. Instead, the minute you know what you want, you go from the nothingness to a possibility, a mathematical advantage every day to the mathematical equation of luck, getting what you want, the coincidences that you want. Know what you want personally, what you want experientially, what you want giving wise, what you want receiving wise each day, learning the life lessons, finding the light, the love in the bankruptcies, the failed businesses, the failed relationships, all the different things that we learn from in the trajectory of where we want to be. And don't try to balance your day because balance is bullshit. Balance is bullshit. Think about harmony instead of balance. I want a harmonious day that utilizes what I want personally, experientially giving and receiving. And that will create over longevity, a great balance in your life, in the trajectory of where you want to be or better. When you know what you want, it becomes a possibility. Now to make it a probability, taking another mathematical leap, you need to know who you can help and who can help you with what you want. The fastest way to get to where you want to be is find someone that's already there and ask them for directions or help someone else get to where they want to be. Have someone pull a seat up for you or pull a seat up for them. It's the simplest and easiest and fastest way to get to a probability in your day if you know what you want and who can help you. And the difference of today comparatively when I was young is that we have a unbelievable, total accessible community that wasn't available ever before. And that community to me is the most important thing in my life. This total addressable community provided by social media and social silos is about 7.6 billion people for free. If you know what you want and who you can help and who can help you, you will build a community of people that what? Want to help each other and know people that can help each other. Why is that so valuable? Because if you build a community each day, two people at a time that will get two more people in your community of people who want to help each other and know people that can help each other, they will buy from you and sell for you for life. The greatest companies in the world have a community of people that are buying from them and selling for them. I was the CEO of Samsung's phone division before I ran the most notable sports agency in the world. I got hired to run the sports agency because of my technology background, not because I was a great athlete or a lawyer, which I was not a good lawyer, but it was a lawyer and definitely not a good athlete, but I knew technology and I knew technology and with that technology, I ran Samsung and I have sold more iPhones than anyone I know. I bought more Apple computers and Apple products than anyone knows. I've sold more Apple products because of the community that they built. And I'm a member of that community. And so are most of you. If you want to now take the nothingness from a possibility to a probability and make it your perspective, then we need to know our how. This is where we have to be a student of time. We have to look at the activities of every day. Activities I get paid for, activities I don't get paid for. Activity of sleep, activity that's planned, activities that's not planned. And if we use three lenses in our how, a lens of productivity of how much value I'm gonna provide, accessibility, how accessible am I to others, and how am I accessing what I want, and most importantly, a lens of gratitude. With everything and everyone in my life today, how am I finding the light, the love, and the lessons, getting a perspective of where I want to be or better? If you know your how, you're utilizing the 24 hours in the most efficient, effective, and statistically successful way. 
using and knowing your how allows you to have non-negotiables every day. I used to want to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now I want to be in the, the Sleeping Hall of Fame. I want to be the best sleeper in the world. I have a coach, 17 years, that teaches me how to sleep. I found it much more valuable than playing football. Everybody sleeps approximately eight hours a day, a third of your life, and it provides more impactful things to my life than anything else, recovery and access. I recover better than anyone, and I access information unconsciously and subconsciously without my ego interfering with where I want to be or better. So I have a non-negotiable of seven hours a day in sleep. Then I have three hours of non-negotiables for my family, my fitness, my faith, my finance, and to study time. And that leaves me 14 hours a day to do whatever I want. Now to utilize that 14 hours a day from this perspective and make it my reality is the fourth daily practice. Know your now. There's a huge epidemic in the world today and it's created by a feeling overwhelmed and procrastinating. And the epidemic is between I am and this is what I want people to think I am. Those people that know who they are, they know they're now and they know they're next. If you know what to do now and know what to do next, it's impossible to feel overwhelmed. It's impossible to procrastinate. Why can't we prioritize and know our now and our next? Because we don't know what's important to us. We're so worried about what other people think, what's missing, what we don't have, and we start accelerating in the wrong direction into the impossibility instead of the reality of now and knowing my now. When you know your what, your who, and your how, you will know your now, and you'll be able to re-engineer and reprioritize your day in knowing that now. Reprioritize your day when God laughs at you because you listen to David Meltzer and have a well-developed plan. And I guarantee you, if you come up with a well-developed plan, God will laugh at you and you'll have to reprioritize your day in a trajectory of where you want to be or better. If you know your reality, the last step is to apply your why. Apply your why. <clears throat> Most people are in search of your why. I deal with a lot of young people I'm the Chief Chancellor of Junior Achievement University. We have 100 million alumni. And the most common question is, Mr. Meltzer, can you help me find my why? Well, I try to shift the paradigm through the what, the who, the how, and the now, and say, if you know your what, your who, your how, you'll know your now, you'll prioritize each day by giving meaning to the past, finding the light, the love, and the lessons in the failures, setbacks, mistakes, even successes, defining moments, historical relevances, in a trajectory to where you want to be or better. But in order to apply our why, we have to understand and have faith that there's something bigger than us. I don't care what religion, philosophy, theory, spirituality you believe in. I believe, and I'm challenging you, I call it best option faith, I'm challenging you, come up with something better to believe in than this. Something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful source or God or Buddha or Muhammad or Joseph Smith or Jesus, something bigger than you that protects you, promotes you, and loves you more than your mom. Therefore, when you lose $100 million and go bankrupt, when your wife leaves you and everybody hates you, you will have the faith that you're being protected and promoted. It's just a matter of time. You see, human beings don't have a capability to know and understand outcomes. So we don't know, number one, that good behavior creates good progress. Bad behavior creates bad progress. So we quit good behavior and continue bad behavior. Or we put the wrong meaning, the wrong light, love, and lessons on an outcome thinking we know what we don't know. If you apply your why, you will one, practice identifying fear. You will know that human capability and human nature reacts to fear with ego, which edges goodness out of your life, edges gold out of your life, edges God out of your life, E-G-O. And instead of accelerating in the wrong direction, lying to yourself, going over, under, through it, around it, manipulating it, cheating it, and denying it, simply stop remind yourself, remember yourself, recollect yourself with your source, and then roll 
in the right trajectory. Knowing what I do say, think, feel, and believe, plus paying attention to what I do say, think, believe of what, who, how, and now, and applying my why will create the coincidences that I want or better. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time.